Before we kick off the show, I want to thank you, the viewer, from the bottom of my heart for the past 20 years of support. Um, I hope we have been used to glorify God and His kingdom. And in celebration of the past 20 years, we are going to kick off every episode this season with the original 2003 Buck Ventures theme song. I hope you enjoy. <laughs> Look at that deer. <laughs> this is awesome. Well, this week is all about Kansas, uh, and I got to tell you this story. I need about two hours to tell the whole thing through. But start the year in Kansas, we had done work. We had the woolly grass farm, and we had the Caddyshack farm. Um, the Caddyshack farm was just loaded with bucks. Uh, I actually went out during the summer and filmed 30 bucks, uh, just in a matter of a few minutes. Uh, but ultimately, Jeff sold that farm, and it closed literally two days before our Kansas deer season opened. Uh, but with that, he took that money and he went and bought a new farm. We call it the Booner Farm. We didn't know much about it. So first thing we did, we went out, threw some Big and J out, put a camera on it. Waited about a week and Jeff and I come back, season had opened, and right away we had a, a big deer, just a big 10 point, big bodied, mature deer, probably five if not six. We had two good deer on it. Uh, one's a big 10, probably upper 50s, maybe 160. Big ol' high guards, just a cool mature deer. So we're gonna slip in with this game winner blind and get it set up for tomorrow because I really think uh, we'll have a chance tomorrow. Well, we got a killer game winner in. Go, he's got him two big bucks to go after. I think we might do some good tomorrow. Let's get out of here. Uh, that's, that's some cold deer too. My brand new farm. Um, so September 17th, we go in, uh, it's a cold front September, which we don't get too often, um, but I believe it was in the 50s, had a northeast wind, uh, high pressure, and I was feeling pretty good. I thought maybe uh, we'll just get lucky and roll in here and shoot this, this big buck. We got bucks coming through everywhere. <laughs> One deer we ended up, you know, we, we had thought about shooting, uh, but just kind of decided, hey, you know, he's probably only four. I uh, need to give him another year. This farm, we're going to manage this farm um, intensely because it's just a farm that can be just unbelievable with the amount of work and time that we're going to put into it. Guys, we just had five bucks come in. Uh, one's a deer that we've actually had a few pictures of. He had stickers, and it's going to be a good deer. I think he's, he's just three or four. So anyway, we have these encounters, just a great first hunt of the year. You know, my job's not to hunt, my job is to film, and, and Jeff was out hunting, so uh, we had to kind of go away from Kansas. We're hunting northwest Oklahoma, and when we come back, we started getting pictures on this 80 farm just south of town. We started getting pictures of some <laughs> really good deer. It was a big framey eight point who I kind of just fell in love with, but just a big Kansas eight point. We just got to get by a bunch of does. That's the only thing that could really screw this up. So um, we're just going to enjoy it and see what happens. So 
So we start hunting this 80. You know, I I'd kind of forgot about the Booner Farm and the woolly grass. I was really focused in on this big eight point. I was just in love with them. Jeff said, hey, go for them. And so I really kind of honed in on this 80. And I hunted this farm, I, I couldn't even tell you how many times, probably, probably 10 times. And I saw this same group of bucks seven or eight times. It was a big eight, big nine, two six by five, seven by five. Again, just a bunch of really good deer. It had encounter after encounter after encounter, but just couldn't get them in front of me. All right, guys, well, we got a game winter ground blind right back there, probably 25, 30 yards. Got some big and jay. We're dumping it out, trying to get them, trying to put them exactly where we want them. And this is the apple, so this stuff smells good, let me tell you. So uh, we're gonna pour a little bit out. We're gonna hunt here in the next few days, and uh, hopefully this right here will kill a big buck. So. Pretty excited. I've seen the, my shooters the last two nights. Uh, I've just been too far, so I'm hoping tonight they'll make it all the way across this field. The water tank right here at 47 yards, and then they just kind of come hang out here. So, and so we're we're sitting there and starting to you know get to that good time that evening. Look up, and here comes a, a kind of a goofy buck, kind of a half rack deer, and then at, behind him is another buck and another buck, and then the big eight. We're sitting there, and all of a sudden owl flies down and just lands on the water tank and as these bucks are coming the first one sees it you know he didn't like that owl and ultimately they all hung up that's just kind of the year we were having I'll tell you it's been a pretty for me and Jeff it's been a pretty unlucky uh, season and a stinking owl had landed on the water tank that they were coming to anyway good night a little bit unlucky uh, this is part of it hopefully you know, maybe there's a bigger reason for it I'll never forget, December 10th, you get a picture on the stealth cam, and it's a stud. Ultimately, we thought that this deer was a deer we call goat, that I had actually been hunting two years prior, just because he had these deep splits on his twos, and we hadn't had a picture of ghost all year long, so we kind of assumed that, hey, this might be ghost that we'd been hunting on the woolly grass. It was only a couple miles away. It's nothing out of the ordinary for them to travel a couple miles in this, this country, so but then we started looking at it and we're like, hey, that's not ghost. Because we started getting pictures of ghost on the woolly grass farm. So ultimately we started calling him imposter. I had deep splits, really good mass, and again, didn't know the deer at all. He just showed up out of nowhere. From that point on, I pretty much made up my mind, I'm going after this imposter deer. I've got 20 days. Uh, I'm going to do everything I can to, to get on this deer. It just so happened we were getting a cold snap there in December and Jeff had scheduled our uh, office Christmas party that night. And we had been joking all week, like, man, we need to be hunting this day, because you know all our, all our bucks are gonna daylight. Pull up the stealth cam, boom. And I'll be honest, I'm pretty scared about tonight. Like, like a good scared. Hunting a deer that we call imposter. He's definitely in the 70s, maybe, maybe 180. The old boat deck's ready to go, so let's go do it. We drive up to Kansas, going into a tree stand, a muddy stand that Jeff and I had hung right on the edge of this field that we call the Booner Bean Field. This is where we had most of our pictures. And that night, um, we saw, I think, 20-something bucks, saw a bunch of deer out in the sweet field um, and didn't see him. So again, another great hunt, but no opportunity. In the next few days, the weather had kind of, was kind of heating up. And I was just, you know, dead set on waiting till I had the right conditions to go in after this deer. You know, I just elected, hey, we're not going to hunt today. 
And so Ty and I ran around farms, um, just getting some things ready, filling up water troughs, um, fixing cameras, that kind of stuff. We didn't hunt, we, we were going out to eat, and I checked my phone, and there he is on a new, on a different camera. Um, it's actually the same camera that I had hunted the first day of the year where I had that encounter with all those great bucks, and I passed the one. And the next day, we had another front coming through. Time to go hunting. Um, Evening of December 20th, it's cold. Pressure is at 30.63, which is unbelievable. Um, we got a northeast wind actually turning east, which would be perfect for this blind we're going into. Um, going to a game winner that we have been in multiple times this year. He was daylight there yesterday at 4.53, almost an hour before dark. So, but we're gonna get in early and just enjoy the evening and just hope and pray that he comes comes by for a stroll wing, let an arrow fly, so. I was just praying, you know, Lord, if it's your will, just let this deer come in and give us an opportunity. And it would be the biggest deer that I've ever shot in my life. Blessing to even have a deer like this to hunt. A lot of people ain't had this chance, so. Ty and I snuck in here. We had to sit down for a little bit because we had some does going down the creek, like eight of them. And uh, they eventually worked off, and then we got in here. So, uh, wheat fields on all sides of us. These deer just come up and down this creek headed to the, to the wheat. So, Lord willing, tonight's the night that he wants to come play. So, did I miss anything? What else? Oh, I'm tired of being here. I don't know if I've said that. I got, I'm so ready to kill something here in Kansas and go home and spend Christmas with my family. And then we can start on again. Maybe today is the day, Lord willing. We'll see what happens. I was talking to Ty, and we, I remember we had just done an interview, and I thought, you know, I was saying, you know, it's been a little slower than we thought it would. Turn the camera off, and all of a sudden I look up, and I see a buck. And then all of a sudden, I look to my left, this deer we call the broken G3 buck gonna be a stud you know just a deer that we knew was gonna be big um, he, he was there all year had a broken g3 uh, so he starts making his way in and then I look to my left and there he is So he starts working towards us. I grab my bow, Ty's getting on with the camera. Uh, and the way that they kind of came in, it made it tough because they swung out to our right. It was not easy for Ty to film. It was a bunch of branches and stuff in the way. Now I could see him clearly the whole time, um, but then all of a sudden he turned and he's about to come right in front of us. I don't know what it was, I don't know exactly what happened, um, but I pushed it big time. I hit him way further back uh, than I wanted to. I think you should have got one. He's pouring away a little bit. You know, I, I hated that I made that shot. I was pretty sick to my stomach, uh, but I was also, you know, it was excitement with being scared and being mad at myself for not making a great shot. But I did think, you know, we were, we were gonna have a chance to recover this deer. Yeah, dang it. It's back. But I, I think he's gonna die. Oh my gosh. Whew, the biggest deer of my life. Gosh, I hope we got him, dude. 
So just to be safe, we had called in Jerry and Marley um, to help us track this deer. Um, you know, it never hurts to, to take every precaution. Right here. This is about where we shot him. Got him. Oh, thank you, God. Is that your deer? Is that your deer? <laughs> well, guys, uh, we have found him. Mr. Jerry and his dog Marley came out to help us. You know, we, we went and got the arrow. It was actually looked way better than the shot did. Um, but we immediately stopped, backed out, called Jerry, and he met us over here this morning. Went 115 yards. But what a, what a blessing. My biggest deer ever. Just, again, so thankful that Jeff, you know, lets me do this. Um, you know, he hired me four or five years ago, and now he's letting me shoot the biggest deer we got on the farm. So I don't know what I did to deserve that, but um, I I'll take it. Um, but you can see he's got these deep splits on his twos, got really good mass, bunch of trash down here on his bases. Um, you know, he showed up December 10th, was the first picture we had of him. And we originally thought he was a deer we'd call ghost uh, that we had on the woolly grass about two and a half miles from here, um, just because he had these twos. But then all of a sudden we started getting pictures of ghost. And realize, hey, this th these are two different deer. So we call him Imposter. That was his name. And um, just to be honest with you, he's probably four, um, but he's not our deer. Um, you know, he doesn't live on us. And Jeff said, hey, if you want to go hunt him, you're welcome to. And so we did. And I didn't, I didn't argue with him. We came and hunted him. And last night, uh, the pressure was 30.63, I think. It was unbelievable. Um, shot him at 4:30. You know, an hour and 15 minutes before dark. And uh, Again, just so blessed. The Lord's, the Lord's been good to me this year. It's my second buck. Um, it's been good to all of us at Bug Ventures. We've, we've had a really, really good year. So, again, just so thankful. Um, we're going to get him cleaned up. He's going to look good on the wall. He's going to eat good. And uh, just a blessing. Well, hey guys, welcome to this week's Walk by Faith. Diving in today to, to Galatians 1.10, it says this. For am I now seeking the favor of men or of God? Or am I striving to please men? If I were still trying to please men, I would not be a bond servant of Christ. And guys, this is a struggle I've had all my life as being a, a people pleaser. And I would, I would tell you if you're that person to work on it, to, you know, that everything that we do should be pleasing to God. And, and that means a lot of times as you go and tell somebody no or this or that, you're not going to be pleasing that person. Um, I think this takes prayer in your closet. I think this takes meditation on this verse and knowing God's word. Um, if you need to, if you have to break that habit, that's what you're going to have to do is lean on God to be able to do it. But to remember that we are to please God. And a lot of times by pleasing man, man we won't be pleasing God. Guys, thanks for watching this week, and remember, as I always say, shoot by sight and walk by faith.